but here we are, I overspent. Ugh. And here we are seeing 999 again. So I don't know what chapter we're closing. Maybe we're closing the chapter on financial anxiety. Maybe we're closing the chapter on fear when it comes to budgeting. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the monthly money reset for the month of April. I'm so excited to get into it. I think we have a really fun video on our hands today. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. I've got everything all set up on my desk. We've got a nice cup of Earl Grey. It's April 1st today, so I am right on time to be doing my budgeting. Last month, you guys may remember, the theme was better late than never because it took me I think more than a whole week into the month of March to sit down and do my budgeting. So today we are right on time, which is amazing. And the theme for today is taking action. So most of the time with my monthly money videos, I do a lot of the work off camera. Like I sit down at my desk, I play some music or a podcast, and I do a lot of the steps of my budgeting. So you guys don't really see those steps. You don't see me inputting the numbers. You don't see me checking the balance of my cash envelopes. You don't see me pay my rent and you don't see me pay off my credit cards. And I think sometimes that leads to some questions like, do I pay off my credit cards? Do I carry a balance on my credit cards? In the past, some people have wondered if I even paid rent. The thing is with these monthly videos, there's so much that I do that goes into my budgeting. Like I'm very like, I don't know, scattered. And I, I'm not a minimalist, let's say, when it comes to my budget. There's a lot of steps that I do and those steps just make me feel comfortable. I also kind of find them fun. I mean, I guess sending an e-transfer to pay my rent isn't necessarily fun, but not everything can be done on camera, which is why sometimes you don't see certain things. Last month, we covered all about my new budget because I moved, got new rent, my monthly fixed expenses changed. So we covered all of that in the last video. I thought for today's video, it would be fun to actually show you guys those steps that I do most of the time off camera, bring you along with them today. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I hope you will enjoy it. If you are new, please subscribe. My name is Zoe, I'm 26, I live in Montreal and I love talking about money. I've been on what feels like a crazy journey with money from being a total overspender, experiencing extreme lifestyle creep, paying off my debt, student debt, and my consumer debt, getting laid off to now figuring out being a freelancer, being a content creator, and finally being in a good place with my budget, in big part thanks to these cash envelopes that we're gonna do today. So that's a little bit about me. I would love to bring back that old question I used to ask in my monthly videos. What is the most expensive and the best purchase you made in the last month? My most expensive purchase was, I made a big online clothing order ended up returning part of it, but it was still expensive. However, my best purchase were these sunglasses. I don't have them with me right now, but anyways, I bought these sunglasses from Mango for $44, got them, and I wasn't super in love with them. Ended up finding the almost exact same pair, but just a little bit smaller, fit my face better at Oak and Fort for half the price that came with a case. So those sunglasses were my best purchase and I returned the other ones. So let me know yours down below and Without further ado, let's get started with our constant. What is the constant of these videos is talking about how I've been feeling about money. Oh, and before we jump into that, I have to say I'm filming on my iPhone. I'm having some camera problems. So I hope that the quality and the sound is okay. But if it's a little bit off, if I'm a little bit like out of frame or whatever, that's what's up. But hey, at least we got the good background this month, right? Last month's background was not it, but you know, we're slowly getting better. <laughs> So in the month of March, I felt very, very good and confident about money, which is amazing. I didn't always feel that way. Most months I would have some moment of like crying and freaking out and blah, blah, blah. Um, but this month I felt really good. I think there were two factors that influence why I felt so good about money this month. The first is my move is a huge financial weight off of my shoulders. And that is because like I explained last month, my monthly fixed living costs have changed significantly. The cost of my rent is dramatically lower. I used to pay $13.50 plus $160 a month for parking, plus hydro, plus internet, plus all of those things. I now pay $700 a month for rent and $175 for parking. And that's because I moved in with my boyfriend, so we got that, we got that cheaper rent. 
And the way that we're doing things are that the Wi-Fi and the heating and all of that hydro are included in that 700. So 700 goes to him and then 175 goes to another guy in the building who I'm renting a parking spot from. So basically 875 a month are my living expenses and there are no surprises. I used to get, you guys remember these crazy surprise hydro bills that would be so expensive and they would really wig me out. So there's no more surprises. So the lower living rent and the no more surprises is a huge weight off of my shoulders. Now I did add in another expense, which is this office, which is 750 a month. So my total fixed expenses, um, both living and business amount to higher than they used to be. But the fact that my living expenses and this now business expense are totally separated, even though the amount is the same, if not higher, I feel this weight off of my shoulders because I used to feel so guilty for how much my rent was, even though in reality, it's really not that expensive for how much of a beautiful apartment I used to have. I just always felt this guilt and you know, maybe I need to talk to my therapist about that. So all that to say the move and the restructuring of my fixed expenses is a big weight off of my shoulders, allowed me to feel way more confident um, this past month. And the second reason is I had a very high earning month in the month of February. Yeah, month of February. And I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a huge injection of confidence. Obviously, I, I know that I have to be very careful and my income fluctuates like crazy and having a high earning month, high earning month one month does not mean you're gonna have a high earning month in the next month, but it felt really nice. And I knew that if any hidden expenses came up, which they did, I had a little bit of a buffer because I had earned extra money in the month of February. So I'm really, really grateful for that. I'm really grateful to be in this good place. Um, like I said, it wasn't always like this. And so to just be in this spot along my financial journey, feels so good. I just really want to keep it up. And I always say this, but I really think these structures that you guys maybe can see here, the cash envelopes, the budget tracker, having that as like my security blanket and my kind of parameters that I set for myself in terms of spending and budgeting as well is really, really helpful. So that's how I've been feeling about money. If you feel comfortable and you wanna share, I would love to read in the comments how you are currently feeling about money. And I guess with that being said, it's time to take some action. So the first thing that I need to do is empty out my old cash envelopes and figure out what's left. And I'm gonna need to put that into the budget tracker. By that, I mean any receipts, which means that money that I've spent um, that I've not yet accounted for. So I'm gonna move this money aside. This is gonna be to refill the envelopes later. This one's empty right now. And we're gonna go through here envelope by envelope and see what's left. There's literally only $5 left in groceries, which means that I spent quite a bit and I have a bunch of receipts that I think need to be input. This is my business expense category. I use this for um, like buying coffees and stuff when I'm working. Some people have commented saying that's not a business expense. <laughs> I said this last month and I'll say it again. I'm not a professional. I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not anything like that. Um, so you don't have to take and you shouldn't take what I'm doing as financial advice. And if you disagree, that's totally cool. Um, yeah, I'm just a girl figuring it all out. And that's how I separate my money. I like to distinguish when I'm going out and grabbing a coffee or food for pleasure and when I'm doing it for work and I, they come from fi different financial buckets in my mind. So I separate them in real life. Okay, I definitely overstuffed this envelope or I budgeted more last month um, because I still have $30 left in here and some change and some receipts to input. The envelope for my dog Maggie seems to have some money left. We've got $40 left in here. I do know though that I had a lot of spending on my cards for her this month. She, Every month she manages to surprise me with some expenses. The dining out envelope is completely empty. We drained that one. Oh, treat yourself is also empty. We love to see it. In the coffee envelope, we have $7 left. Perfect. 
personal care. I think I budgeted 40 here and it looks like we have about 30 left. Oh no, 40. Okay, I don't know how much I budgeted here. So that's everything that I have left. What do I do with this money? I will take it back to the bank and either use it to pay off my credit cards or put into savings. In the meantime, I have this account here, account. <laughs> I have this envelope which says savings on it. It's full of American money that I'm just holding on to for the next time I go to the States. So I'm gonna put it in here until I go over to the ATM. I also get asked from time to time, what do I do with the loose change that I have left? If I can find a bank that is open that accepts coins, I will take it there. And I say that with a little bit of animosity because I've complained about this so many times, but like the banks are just like never open. The ones that are open, like no longer take cash. It's super, super bizarre. Um, so sometimes I'm just kind of stuck with this change and I'll either keep it in one of the envelopes um, and use it when like I'm paying cash and I need exact change or I'll find a bank at some point that will take my loose change. So for now, I'm gonna put this in the savings envelope as well. The last envelope that I have here is this spent on credit. So this is any time that I go somewhere and they don't take cash or I forgot my envelopes and I have to spend with my credit card. I will then take that same amount out of the envelope, the according envelope, and put it into this spent on credit envelope to then be able to take to the bank and put it right back onto my credit card to pay off whatever I bought on credit. Now, of course, all of the envelopes that I have don't cover my entire budget. Things like gas I will often buy on credit. If I shop on Mango and I treat myself, that's on credit sometimes. So I don't always reconcile, but this money specifically came from when I went to the grocery store, forgot my cash envelopes and bought, you know, however much groceries. There must've been something else in here too. So I put it aside to then pay off my credit card. So these two envelopes, basically, the savings and the spent on credit would essentially come with me to the bank whenever I can get there and put them back into my accounts, either for savings or credit card repayment. Oh, 10 cents. So this month I was quite good with keeping up with my budget tracker. Um, I input most of my receipts and we've only got a few left that I just need to put in. So I'm opening up my budget tracker here from the line and I am going to go into the tab called expense log and enter in all of these receipts. You guys can see I have this long, long list here because I've now been using the tracker for three months. So every time I buy something, I come on here and I put it into this tab. This tab will then populate the according month. So in this case, March with all of those purchases and we'll be able to see the breakdown by category. So I'm gonna go ahead and do these right now. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so weird. So here I have two receipts from the farmer's market, um, bought cheese and bought some bacon. The receipt for the bacon is $8.88 and the receipt for the cheese was $9.99. I'm sorry, but that is some angel number magic at work here. That is so bizarre. Really quick, I have this angel number story with the number 999. So. In my second to last semester of university, I was finishing up my finance minor and I was studying for my last finance exam. And I saw the number 999 like everywhere. I don't remember where, but I started seeing 999 everywhere. So I'm into the whole angel number thing. I looked it up and it said that 999 meant you are letting go of something or you're closing a chapter on something. And I was like, whoa, like, I'm closing the chapter on university soon and I'm definitely closing the chapter on this finance minor. So during that very last exam, I guess I must have nudged my calculator or done something while I was working. And I looked at my calculator and it said 999 on it. 
And that is when I knew that angel numbers were real. And it was a really cool and special moment. And here we are seeing 999 again. So I don't know what chapter we're closing. Maybe we're closing the chapter on financial anxiety. Maybe we're closing the chapter on fear when it comes to budgeting. I don't know. So maybe some of you need to hear some 999 today. And if you do, here is your sign. I'm not sure what 888 means, and I don't really have time to look it up right now, but let's look it up. Let's, let's not be lazy. Let's look it up. <gasps> 888 means take control of your life. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you are closing a chapter and you're about to take control of your life. You hear it here first. Wow, that is so special. That is so cool. Okay, so now that all of the receipts are input, we can soon go ahead and take a look at the monthly spending by category. Ooh. One of my goals that I set last month was to reduce my spending and that did not happen this month. Um, I definitely overspent and I don't know if you can see it, Behind me on the tracker, there's a lot of red and I didn't feel bad about it until right now when I'm sitting down to film because I don't know, I feel for myself, I know that these mistakes happen, but then somehow on camera, I'm like afraid to let you guys down, which I know is silly, um, but here we are, I overspent. Now, because the theme for today is taking action, I'm not gonna run through each category line by line. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what is left in each category and you guys can take a look for yourself. We'll go back next month to running through each and every purchase, but here's what I spent, here's what I spent by category. You guys can see there is a lot of red and I feel a little bit disappointed in myself. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Off the top of my head, I can tell you that some of the notable purchases are, for whatever reason, I overspent on groceries. I don't even really know how because most of it was spent on cash. I might have ordered HelloFresh and that could be why. Treat yourself, it looks like I overspent by like $500 but there are two things in there that I am returning that are going to amount to, I think in total, it's gonna to amount to $200. So I, I budgeted $100 for treat yourself, so I overspent by $200, which honestly, I'm like, okay, it's fine. Like I <laughs> felt like I deserved a couple of treats last month and I'm actually not mad at myself about those. So that one I will say looks worse than it is. And the big purchase for Maggie where I overspent was she was looking so scraggly and every time I looked at her, I was like, ooh, you look like a junkyard dog. So I splurged and took her to the groomer, which is something I never do. I usually just get like her face trimmed or her nails trimmed like kind of a la carte grooming, but I took her for a full groom. She was so cute, but I don't think I'll be doing that again for a little while because it was very expensive and Luckily for me, she's not the type of dog that needs constant grooming. So that's that when it comes to my spending. Okay, the next step of taking action is going to be to pay my rent. Let's pay my rent together. For privacy's sake, I am going to just turn my computer like this while I pay my rent. I pay my rent by e-transfer and my landlord is my boyfriend. <laughs> so I'm gonna log in to my online banking and send him an e-transfer. The way we're doing it is I'm sending him the full 875 and then he's sending it to the guy that I'm renting the parking from. He just knew the guy, so it works out easier that way that he sends the transfer. You guys may remember that in my sort of annual goal setting, my financial goal setting, I said that I really wanna get one month ahead. I'm happy to say that I was more than one month ahead this month, which felt really, really good. So I'm gonna take that 875 from my one month ahead account, transfer it to my checking, so 875. And then from the checking, I'm gonna send it to JS. There we go. I have to say it feels really good to pay my rent without a pit in my stomach, like without any of that guilt, which, you know, if had I kept living there, I probably would have had to do the work to like undo that guilt. Um, but it feels really, really good to do that without the guilt. Now, the next step of taking action, let's pay off my credit cards together. Somebody asked me last month if I ever carry a balance on my credit card. And the answer is F no. F no, because credit card debt, is so expensive. The interest rates on my credit cards are 20% and 
I like to think of it as I'll be happy if I get a 20% discount while I'm shopping. So I'm not gonna spend 20% on my purchases and carry that over on credit card debt. If I ever buy something that I really can't afford that I need to kind of take on debt to purchase or maybe it's a multitude of purchases, which that happened to me multiple times in the past, that's how I filled up my line of credit with consumer debt. I will take the balance on the credit card and pay it with my line of credit. So my line of credit is an account from my bank, which is much, much lower. My interest rate on my line of credit, I believe is 7%, which is significantly less than 20%. So it's a more affordable way of taking on debt. Is it ideal? No. Is it necessary? Sometimes yes. So that's how I manage that. Right now I'm in the process of paying that off and that is a big goal of mine for the year. I am so close to paying off that debt and we're gonna do it together in a separate video. I'm gonna update you guys on my financial goals. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. But for today, I'm very lucky that I'm in a place where I can pay off my credit card balances in full. So I have two credit cards. I have a MasterCard and an American can express let's take a look at the mastercard first okay so my statement balance for last month is 627 and 8 cents and i'm going to pay that off in full from my checking account now i'm going to take a look at what the balance is on my american express it's with my american express that anytime i have an expensive purchase that's kind of where i go so let's see what the balance is Okay, the statement balance on My American Express is 1,189, which isn't too, too bad, especially when you factor in that I'm gonna be getting a refund for some of those purchases that I made. So I'm gonna pay that off also from my checking account. And I say from my checking account, but oftentimes throughout the month, I will put money aside into what I call my saving to spend. So when I get money from, like when I get paid basically, um, I'll put the money in the saving to spend. And then when it's the end of the month, I take the money from saving to spend into checking to pay off my credit cards and put also money into my savings. So from the checking to the American Express is 1,189 and 51 cents. Submit. Send. The last thing we're gonna do together on the computer is put some money towards my one month ahead. Last month, I said that the one month ahead was going to cover my living, rent, and parking, so 875, but I realized this month it would also be really cool if my one month ahead could cover my day-to-day -day spending, which is the cash envelopes, and usually I do about $1,000 in cash. So my one month ahead goal would end up being 1,875. Right now I have about $900 in here, so we're gonna do another 875 into the one month ahead. So that's that. At this point, I am not going to put any money into savings because I kind of want to do it in a separate video. I want to update my savings, take a look at everything. I also am missing some paychecks because um, I'm really behind on my invoicing. I have to invoice one of my contracts, which will be about $1,000 coming in and that money will definitely go into some of my savings. So I'm just not quite ready to finish moving money around just yet. Now, I know people like it when I talk about how much I earned in a month in these videos. Straight up, I haven't done the calculation yet. The money has come into my bank, but I haven't actually like filtered it and looked at it. So I don't know exactly how much I made. Plus, like I said, I'm behind on my invoicing. Maybe really quick, I can just kind of figure it out. Okay, so my rough estimate of my earnings is 5,375. That is from all sources, including AdSense, copywriting, and sponsorships. So that is significantly lower than it was the previous month. And I'm okay with that. I kind of knew it would happen. This seems to be about my like average, which is amazing. My goal this year was to make $5,000 a month. So this is over my goal and I am so excited and grateful for that. Like anytime I hit that $5,000 a month goal, it just feels really good. It's an amount that lets me feel comfortable, that feels like I can, you know, pay off my expenses, have a little bit of fun. I would like to earn a little bit more to be able to contribute more to my savings, but it's a journey and it fluctuates and that's okay. On that note, I also know that I need to keep aside a little bit of money because I have some big business expenses coming up. I mentioned earlier that I'm filming on my iPhone right now because I need to buy a new camera and that is probably gonna cost me around $1,000. I also wanna make some upgrades to my filming setup. My ring light is really, really busted. It still works, but it's like busted. 
<laughs> I might like to get a microphone. So I wanna invest a little bit in my YouTube setup. So I'm keeping some money aside for that as well. And that's just kind of something to keep in mind that's coming up. Alrighty, so that's done. The very last step is everyone's favorite and that is to refill my cash envelopes. So seeing as I spent quite a bit more in March, I would like to lower my spending already for the month of April. I already did the budget and the total cash spending is going to be 920. So let's break that down by category. $400 a month seems to be the grocery amount that works really well for me. I'm gonna need to go investigate why I overspent this month, but every other month it worked really well for me. So let's go two, four, six, eight, 100, two, four, six, eight, 200, two, four, six, eight, 200, 300. I don't have that many 50s. Two, four, six, eight, 400. Next up is dining out. We're gonna do $200, two, four, six, eight, 100, two, four, six, eight. There's the 50, 200. I know to some people this may be a lot, but especially with the spring coming, I really wanna work more on just getting out of the house more, enjoying life more, and that's gonna come in the form of dining out. I know it. Treat yourself. We did enough treating of oneself last month, so we're gonna go for two, uh, what? We're gonna go for $50 this month. I'm gonna be real, I always end up overspending on this category because it feels like every month I buy myself something on credit, but keeping it kind of in control with cash is never a bad idea as well. And sometimes people get so mad when I talk about like treat yourself, but like, that's life. <laughs> that's life, we're meant to enjoy it. For Maggie, we're gonna do $80, so two, four, six, eight. Coffee is always $40, and that number works super well for me. We're gonna do it in five, so five, 10, 15, 20, and then we'll do 40. Business expense, same thing. Transportation, I said $30 actually, so we're gonna, we're gonna need these fives. Oh, okay, I didn't get the like good amount of cash out. Okay, so we'll do $40 for transportation and I'll just have change in the end. So 930 is my total budget, that means. $40 for personal care. $40 for gifts. And we have an extra 50 because I took out too much money at the ATM. The home category, I'm budgeting $0 because with the move and everything, just these unexpected costs come up and I know I'm gonna end up buying them on credit. So here are all of the envelopes. Let's now clip them into their binder. You guys, that's a wrap. Oh my God. We really took action today and I am exhausted. Um, today's Saturday, April 1st. I don't know if I said that and I'm gonna go rest now. I actually have a party to go to tonight and it's a costume party. So I need to go rest up for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so happy every single time I get to sit down and talk about money with you guys. It really means the world to me. Thank you so much for your support, for again, allowing me to have another amazing month of doing a job that I love. I really, I'm really, really grateful for you from the bottom of my heart. I love you so much. I hope you have a fantastic month of April. I will see you in my next video. So much exciting content to come. So be on the lookout for that. I will stop talking now. Love you, bye.